But I want to invite you to turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16, we are getting close to um, to being, uh, well, I guess we're over halfway now, but uh, we're, we're pushing towards the end. It's been a long journey, but we're pushing towards the end, amen? And I'm grateful for God's goodness towards us. I want to start off before we even read anything to to go ahead and start in prayer and then we'll look as we set up the, the message for today. Father, we do thank you so much once again for your grace and your mercy. Lord, I'm so grateful that you are God and there is none beside you. Lord, and you have everything planned out. Lord, your plan is sure. Nothing will ever uh, halt it or... or um, or get it off track. It is it is working and it will work through all situations. And Lord, I pray that you would have your will in our lives tonight as we look into your word. Lord, I pray that you'll reveal your truths. I pray that you'll give me the the unction and the the remembrance uh, and the things that I need for this hour. Lord, I do humble myself before you, realizing that I am just a man in need of you. Great, great is the need of the night. And Lord, I pray that you would have your will. Lord, we love you and thank you for all you do for us. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. As we're looking or coming to Matthew chapter number 16, we're focusing back to uh, chapter 13. And when uh, chapter 12, when the Lord gave the parables of the age that we're in, he gave uh, seven parables there that uh, revealed the church, the mystery. But in this re revelation, he reveals to us the different souls or the different people that will come to know Christ and the, the way that the church will work. And one of the most amazing statistics or the most amazing things that is revealed uh, in this is that in the time that we live in, that there are those who believe and those who do not believe. There are those who will trust in what the Word of God says and and choose to believe Christ's word. And, and there will be those who will reject it. And those who will not believe. And, one, and the reason for that is because uh, the human race has one problem. And that is sin. Sin is the, is the problem of the hour. It has a most amazing statistic. And that is that a hundred percent of uh, of all the people are sinners. There's none that are, that's exempt. It affects everybody. And for this cause, it's difficult for people to see the spiritual uh, dimension. In fact. It is only by the grace of the or the gift of the Holy Spirit that we can even have any kind of understanding of the dimension of the spiritual realm. And the Holy Spirit is that that illuminates us, illuminates the work, and reveals that redemption to us. And not only to us, but to all that are saved. Listen, I want you to realize something. That, that nobody woke up one morning and said, Hey, you know what? I'm lost. I'm going to get saved. It isn't a human factor. It isn't, it isn't the, the ability of, of humanity to be able to do that. It's, a, it's an impossibility. The Holy Spirit of God must convict that person. Must reveal must unleash, uh, open their eyes to be able to see. And the redemption is the illumination work of the Spirit of God. 
we're all spiritual blinded. I'm just going to be honest with you, even today as we sit here as believers, as, as most of us here would be, uh, consider ourselves believers, uh, there, there's a sense by which we're still spiritually blinded. We do not have all the answers, nor are we uh, have arrived. But we're pursuing, by the direction of the Holy Spirit, that which is truth. But we all are spiritually blind and are limited to the physical. And we see that very well. We, we experience that part of our lives greater than we do the spiritual. In fact, we, we, we look very hard to make sure that we don't miss anything concerning the physical. We, but for the spiritual, it's not that way. We're, we don't strive for it as we do for the physical. I mean, we'll get up early in the morning and, and uh, go to work. We'll work hard all day and we'll come home. Physically. But for the spiritual... Boy, it is, it is like pulling teeth to get us to open our Bibles and to study it for an hour. To pray for 30 minutes. To, to dedicate time towards that progression. And in this realm of being spiritual blind, there are two kinds. There are those who are blinded who will never see, and then there are those who are blinded who will see in the human realm. In our passage, as we meet both of these kinds of people, we will meet them in, in chapter 16. These are blind people who will who we'll be looking at tonight who will never see. And then next week we'll be looking at those who will see. The whole world is made up of these two people. Everybody you'll meet will be either those who will, will believe in Christ or either there'll be those who will never believe. There's no fence line there. There's no middle ground. There's no place of undecided or un, 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 unbelieving decision. And what makes a difference is what these two people do with the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the difference. And can I tell you that every day that when, when people arise and, and, and enter into this world, that decision is placed before them on a daily basis. Whether it be by someone directly uh, prompting them in the, in the causes of the, of the Lord Jesus Christ, or even if it's the, the nature by what we're living in and the, the reality of the world and how it was made and, and the mystery of the things of the, of the solar system that prompts us to know that there is a God and He always points to the Lord Jesus Christ. If you are a follower of Jesus Christ and believe in Him, He gives you sight. He gives you sight to see. If you reject Him and go through life and eternity blind to spiritual reality, that's what we're going to learn and look at today in our text. Now, just to sort of reinforce what I'm trying to say here, I, I want to look at just a few scriptures before we get into our text. In John chapter number 1 and verse number 5, 
It says, And the light shined in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Talking about humanity. The light of Christ came into the darkness, and they could not perceive, or they could not receive that light. Why? Because of the darkness. Verse number 6 says, There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came to bear witness, uh, the same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that, that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light that was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came to his own, and his own received him not. They would not receive the light because of the darkness. In Romans chapter number 1 and verse number 21, it says, Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful. Because, but became vain in their imagination, and their foolish heart was darkened. In 1 Corinthians chapter number 2 and verse number 14, it says, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Darkness cannot comprehend nor can it perceive or understand the things of God. Paul said men are blind. They cannot see. In Ephesians 4, verse number 17, it says, This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not according to, uh, not as other Gentiles walk in the, the vanity of their minds, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from, from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their hearts. It has been given to us to understand that darkness is the, the description of humanity in the, in the Word of God. It is the description of humanity that they're all under darkness. That they cannot comprehend. And it isn't because God hasn't revealed this. It's because of their own blindness and their dark heart. In Psalms chapter number 82 and verse number 5 it says, They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. Isaiah described them, and he said they have eyes and they see not. Jeremiah said the same thing. In Exodus chapter number 5 and verse number 2, there is Pharaoh. Pharaoh, he received the, and saw the miracles of God. They, he saw the miracles of God. And yet he said, who is the Lord? That I should obey his voice. To let Israel go. I know not the Lord. Neither will I let Israel go. Why? Because of the darkness that was in him. In Psalms chapter number 73 and verse number 22. So foolish was I, and ignorant I was as a beast, therefore, um, before thee. Realizing the darkness that was inside. Proverbs 4, 4 and verse number 19 says, The way of the wicked is as darkness. Men are blind, they're blind. 
we have physical uh, understanding. We, we understand the physical realm to, to a place that, that, that's unbelievable. But as for the spiritual, there's a darkness there. And what is this darkness based upon? Why, there, there are three things that, that, that uh, contribute to this total darkness of mankind. One is sin. We are blind because sin has blinded us. Sin has blinded us. The scripture refers to it as darkness. And the Bible says that we walk in darkness. We, we are those who walk in darkness. It says in John 3 that men love darkness rather than light. Why? Because their deeds are evil. And we are trapped by that darkness. There's a second, uh, there's a second uh, contributor to the blindness of mankind, and that is Satan. In 2 Corinthians chapter number 4, verse number 3 and 4, it says, uh, The God of this age, is, uh, this world, has blinded the minds of them that believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel should shine, should shine through. So there's a blindness that, that, is, that is from sin and is compounded by a blindness that is satanic. But there's a, there's a third blindness that I want us to realize that is there. And that is the blindness of judgment that comes from God. And is an act of God. For example, in Luke chapter 19, we find God Himself being in both in blindness. It says in verse number 42, If thou hast known even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto, unto thy peace, but now they are hidden, from thee or from thine eyes. They had been hidden from them. Why? Because they had rejected the truth. The truth had been given to them. The, the truth had been presented to them. But now God has hid it from them. If Jerusalem would have woke up and saw what time they lived in. But now it, it is hidden from their eyes. And later it, in, the, in that same chapter it says, Because thou knowest not the time of thy visitation. They could not see the time that God had visited them. And their blindness. They did not want to Awake to the light, so blindness took over their life. So men, is, men are trapped in blindness. Blindness by sin, blindness by Satan, and there's a blindness that is by God. That places a judgment upon the life of people. And we're all sinners. We're all in the in a sense, subject to the satanic dom uh, dominion and, and uh, consequences under the judgment of God that fall upon this earth. I mean, even Noah, even though he was a righteous man, he was still going through the judgment of God that was taking place. Even though he was sheltered by the storm, he still went through the storm. Many of us today are, are experiencing a judgment that God has on this world because of the choices that we have or our nation or people have made and the judgment of God is falling upon them and we're experiencing that also. 
when in the Old Testament, the righteous suffered with the wicked. When a drought came, everyone suffered. So we must realize that we that in a sense we are suffering with all that is taking place. When people do not see the kingdom of God, do not see the Lord Jesus Christ for who He is, do not see the holiness and righteousness of, of, of His being. And so most people just go through this world as, as it was the, the physical was the only part there is. Go through this world grabbing all that we can get. Like my Sunday school used, teacher used to say, grabbing all we can get, canning it, and sitting on the can. They're all there around this, this world, and they miss this spiritual dimension they're blind to it the blindness that where they'll never see now as we come to chapter 16 I want us to have an understanding of where we're at in the scriptures it's been a little while since we've actually been in Matthew. But in Matthew chapter number 13, the Lord described this age. He began, it began with the, His rejection. It ends with His return. That is the age by what we live in. This was a time... When Christ was rejected and now he, we're awaiting his return. This long sweeping time, uh, already nearly 2,000 years into it, this long period of time he calls the mystery time in the Word of God. In the Old Testament it wasn't clearly seen. The only thing that was really clearly seen was the millennial kingdom. And it was given in, in detail of what would take place. But the time of the church was a mystery. It was not given. But in Matthew chapter 13, he gives us a parable of seven parables by which describes this age. And the single mark of these parables by which it teaches the in the mystery, uh, this mystery time or the church age, is that there will be people who will reject and receive the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the that is the main mark through all the parables that there will be those that receive and those that reject the Lord Jesus Christ. Those who will believe. And those who will not believe, that will be the mixture of the people that are here. Those that will receive the kingdom and those who will reject the kingdom. The wheat and the tares, they grow together. And Matthew tells us. And he gives us all these understanding. And he gives us six pictures or six uh, different uh, object lessons through uh, uh, Matthew 13, verse number 53, to Matthew 16, to verse number 12. He gives us these lessons, or eight, eight uh, illustrations of these, these uh, seven parables. And we come to this, this one picture here, which we, we have a glimpse of those who betray the Lord Jesus Christ. Those who will not receive Him. Those who will not uh, bend their knee or, or, or bow to Him who He is. And we see this 
breaking forth in verse number one. And it says this right here. It says the Pharisees and the scribes. Uh, I'm sorry. It says the Pharisees and with the Sadducees came and tempted, desiring him that he would show them a sign from heaven. He answered and said unto them, What uh, when it when it is evening, you say it will be fair weather for the sky is red. And in the morning, if it 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 will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering, lower, lowering. O oh, ye hypocrites, you can discern the face of the skies, but you cannot discern the the signs of the time. A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it, but the sign of the prophet Jonah. And he left them and departed. Now he comes face to face with the the wicked foolish blind that is there his own people these are these are those that aren't just blinded by their own sin they're blinded by a, a satanic blindness and not only by a satanic blindness but they're also uh, blinded by a sovereign blindness of god in Matthew chapter 13 in fact Jesus had quoted Isaiah, and Isaiah predicted that they would be like this. That hearing they would not hear, and seeing they could not see. They would, didn't, would not have understanding or be unable to understand. They would have a gross heart towards him. And he met them. Now, the interesting thing is given to us in verse number one. It says the Pharisees also with the scribes, I mean the Sadducees, came. Now, if you'll back, you'll, you'll remember that Jesus was on the side of Galilee that, uh, that, that is considered Gentile. He is at uh, the Capris which is the, the ten Gentile nations that are, that are on that area. And he leaves and he goes westward. He, he crosses the, the sea again westward to the westward shore. And as soon as he gets out of the boat, he's back in Jewish territory. Now, as soon as he steps out on, Jewish, on the Jewish shore, they immediately hit him, his enemies. They, they flock to him. They waste no time to approach him. And we, we learn of the characteristic of this group of people who will never believe. And the first thing that we see is that this group of people that never believe, that they seek darkness. They seek darkness. They seek the, the fellowship with darkness. This is the first characteristic that we notice of these people. It says in verse number one. That the Pharisees with the scribes came. Now there's a marvelous. Thing that, that, that we must understand. We must understand the relationship of the Pharisees and scribes. Because it's, it's, it, 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 it must be for us to understand what's taking place here. The Pharisees and scribes. They never got along. They actually hated each other. In fact, there is a, a very uh, humorous uh, incident that takes place in, uh, in the Apostle Paul's life at the, uh, uh, while he's on trial later in the book of Acts. You'll probably remember reading it as I describe it, but the Pharisees and, and the Sadducees were there, and... and uh, they were trying him, and he simply told them, I believe in the resurrection. And when he said that, there was such a battle or uproar that took place that the place was divided. 
because they do not they did not believe the Sadducees did not be, I mean uh, the the Sadducees did not believe in the resurrection. That's why they were sad, you see, because they had no hope. They didn't believe in angels. They didn't believe in spirits. They didn't believe in, in um, uh, immortality. They didn't believe in, 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 in any of that. They were theological liberals. The Pharisees were theological conservatives. And, that, and all, all that means is they believed in the resurrection. And they, they were at each other's throat. They had a great divide there. But the Pharisees were what we would call fundamentalists. They believed in the interpretation of the law. They also believed in the traditions of all the, the Talmud and the, and the stuff that was passed down from, from, from generation to generation that it was equally binding as the writings of God. And on the other hand, the Sadducees denied all tradition. They didn't accept the tradition of the elders or the, or the tradition of the rabbis. They didn't accept the scriptures. Uh, I mean, they only accepted the scriptures, but they did not accept them as literal. They accepted them only as they could spiritualize them. So on one hand, the Pharisees were common people. And the Sadducees, they were the high priest. They were the priesthood. The Pharisees tended to be poor. And the Sadducees were more wealthy. Because they ran the temple business. They were the ones that were selling the, all the sacrifices. They were the ones that were demanding the, the gifts. And they made a fortune off of it. So you can see the division was there. The rich and the poor. The, 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 the theological liberals and the theological uh, fundamentalists. And they were, they were battling it out. But here. Here they come together. Here in the, in the original Greek, it, it, it brings them in as they're one. Not as they're separate even, but they're one. Instead of it saying the Pharisees and the Sadducees, it says the Pharisees and Sadducees. They would not come to the light. They would rather go out and find someone that believed just as bad against Jesus Christ and buddy with them. They sought darkness, not the light. In Matthew chapter number 15 and verse number 14, Jesus called them the blind leaders of the blind. And that's exactly what they were. As they led each other deeper into darkness. What I want you to see tonight more than anything is this right here. That these Pharisees and scribes, they had the light with them. They saw the miracles of God Day after day after day. They saw what God, they, they saw what God, uh, what Jesus Christ could do. And, and they saw the proof of who He was. But they would not receive it. And because they would not receive it, it comes to a place where God no longer reveals it to them. From this point forward, you'll find that that Jesus spends 90% of His time with His disciples. There's no more multitude. 
There's no more debating of the, of the Pharisees and scribes to the place that, that, that he does now or, or the toleration of the Pharisees and, and Sadducees as, as Jesus did before. And what I want you to realize is this right here, that there is a time in the, in the life of every person that if they re- receive the truth and don't, React to that truth that God takes that truth away. The Pharisees and scribes, they had no way of coming to the place where they could know the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because they objected the truth. Here in this verse, in the verses that he gave us here, they're looking for a sign. They said, Show us a sign in heaven. I mean, he's already showed so many signs. He fed 5,000 before. I mean, he saw people, he saw people who, that were lame walk. They, they saw people that were blind see. They saw people that couldn't hear hear. They saw the dead raised. Yet they would not receive the sign. Can I tell you, the rejection of the light only brings more darkness. Only brings more darkness. People that sit under the preaching of the Word of God and never turn to the Word of God, can I tell you, they're in danger of never being able to be touched by God. Because the more you reject, the more it's going to take. And pretty soon, God just cuts you off. I mean, he brings them to a place where they're under such a condemnation that when he tells them or reacts to what they say about a sign, he says, listen, he said, you can, you can look at this sky and say, today's going to be fair weather. Or you can look at the signs of, and say, say, today's going to be stormy weather. Or tomorrow's going to be stormy weather. He said, you, you can be the meteorologist by which it can de- determine that what physically is going to happen. He said, but you can't see the spiritual things that stand before you. Can I tell you, we live in a time that people can say that, tell us when the economy is going to rise and when it's going to fall. When the stock market is going to go up when it's going to go down. We've got people today that, that, that can determine that, that, that the dollar is going to be strong because of this or, or it's going to be weak because of this. But can I tell you, we can't determine the time of this that we're living in spiritually. He faces this group by which will ever be in darkness. The sad thing is in our life, how often do we put aside the light? The sad thing is, is how often do we as, as even believers not heed the truths of the Scriptures? And think because of the fact that we've trusted that the Lord Jesus as our Savior, that there's no replication because of that. Oh, friend, this is a this is a sad, sad place here. This is a sad place in Scripture, and I, I forget where it else is mentioned, but in one of the occasions that it's mentioned in one of the other Gospels, it says that Jesus sighed in his heart when he heard these things and replied to them. 
when Jesus realized, uh, or not realized because he always knew, but when, at this point in time when he saw the place that they were at, in their, that they would never be able to receive the light. How sad is that? That he sighed within himself. There are several other things that I wanted to give you tonight, but I'm not going to be able to. Because of the fact that they that they desired the darkness rather than light. They ended up cursing the light. Do you realize that when they asked Jesus for a sign, it was like spitting in Jesus' face because they had seen all the signs that he has given? It was like turning from him when they said, Show us a sign in heaven. And they didn't even realize this. Standing before them was the sign from heaven. When Mary took him to the to to the uh, to the temple that day, and uh, I forgot the prophet's name, that when he came out, he said, "This is a sign." And he prophesied that Jesus Christ would be the sign, but they could not see it. Oh, they were so, so lost. Oh, my friend, how we need today to be open to the light, to receive it. To receive the truth of the word of God. To, to receive the, the truths that lie in it. And not to, not to push it away and not to reject it, but to let it have a part in our lives. To mold us and to make us. To, to, to make us more like Christ. Oh, he reveals in these verses that group of people, that sad group of people that will never, never know salvation. Why? Because they love darkness rather than light. Sad. And the thing about it is those people are not just people of that day, they're people of today. People, that you, you tell them the truth, but they'll never, never turn from their darkness. So sad. Oh, how we are to be children of the light. The Bible says that we're to walk in the light uh, and not in the darkness. That means that our character ought to be that that reveals light. Do you know that the, the greatest condemnation that convicted my heart and soul when I, when, I was, when I was under conviction of God was the verse that said that a man that cannot control his lips, his religion, or what he believes in God is vain? That means non-existent, not right. Boy, how that convicted me to, to value my life before God, to see what I really was because I, I wasn't walking according to light. I was a walking according to darkness. Oh, how we need to be children of the light. Next week, we'll look at those who, who see, who believe. We'll look at the other end of the spectrum, those who, 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 who are the good ground. We see the tares. We see the bad ground. Those who never receive Christ. And next week, we'll look at those who receive him. Let's stand together as we pray. Father, I do thank you for your word. And Lord, it, 
I know that in, in some ways it, this is so simple, but Lord, many times, and I've heard it over and over again, well, I, you know, I, I'm just not ready to be saved. I'm not ready to change my life. And the sad thing is that some of those wait until it's too late. And the opportunity never comes again. Lord, I pray, God, that you'll help us. To not to be like that, to be those that are quick to make a decision for you. To walk for you, with you, to, to live for you. And Lord, we'll praise you for what you accomplish in our lives. We love you and thank you for all you do. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, shake hands with one another. You're dismissed.